Welcome to Wednesday Noonday Bible Class at the Community Baptist Church in San Jose, California, where our pastor uh, is Reverend Dr. H. O. Turner. My name is Brother James Kennedy, and my sister Maria Dreyer is the one who types this lessons for you so you can follow along uh, in this study. We thank her for uh, thank her for her commitment and dedication. Uh, a good lesson. This is session six, United Through the Spirit. And um, yeah, the Bible is the passage will come from 1 Corinthians 12, uh, 4 through 14. And uh, first we start off with uh, some prayer requests. Uh, we want to pray for our sick and shut in. Uh, we want to pray for uh, Denia Rucker and Nick Carter. Margaret Michaels, Evelyn Cunningham, Sharon Berry, Pastor Tim Swanson, Deacon Barnum Duncan, Joseph Hampton, Ken and Virginia Sanders, Larry uh, Henry Sr., Reverend Jerry Burgess, Georgia Payton, Eloise Oliver, Bonnie Harris, Sharon Rockstead, Michael Peterson Jr., Beverly Combs, and Salisa Rocky. We pray for our family, for their newborn daughter, Gemma, uh, home and doing better. We, saw, uh, we thank you for that answer prayer there. I'm glad she's doing better. Thank you, Lord, for the answer prayer. Uh, my Simeo family for healing in their newborn son, Victor, in uh, the NICU. We pray for our brother, John Rucker, for protection and healing from upcoming medical, medical search, uh, procedures. We pray for Sister uh, Andrick for, uh, for healing uh, from a double lung transplant. We pray for the Banks family for strength and blessing. We pray for Sister Harriet Gray and the family at the loss of her sister, Marion Nelson. We pray for Sister Diane Edwards for guidance and direction. We pray for our CBC staff, uh, Sister Maria Dreyer and Brother Jim Kennedy Ministry, uh, Reverend Francis, Reverend Parker, Auxiliaries Ministries, Teachers and Church Family. And last but not least, but our, we pray for our pastor, Reverend Dr. H. B. Turner for peace, protection, and uplifting. We also pray for those out there watching, Lord, you know the needs and wants. We pray that uh, you answer their prayers according to your will. We we'll start off with scripture where we, I'll be reading from Psalms 103 in the King uh, James Version. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all thy iniquity, who heals all thy diseases. Who redeems thy life from destruction, who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. Who satisfy thy mouth with good things, uh, so that the youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He makes known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, and neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us uh, after our sins nor rewards us according to our iniquity. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is uh, his mercy toward them that fear him. Uh, as far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgression from us. Like a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them that fear him. For he knows our frame, and he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as the flower of the field, so he flourish, for the wind passes over it and it is gone, and the place thereof should know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and the righteous unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant and those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, 
hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Please uh, bless the Lord, all his works in all places and dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. May a blessing be to the hearing and reading of Psalms 103. Let's bow in our prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you today thanking you for your many blessings. We thank you for being our God, Lord, and watching over us, Lord, all through the night and, and, and in this day, Lord. We thank you for your uh, word for the day, Lord. We thank you that uh, as we study your word, Lord, that you let the Holy Spirit uh, minister to our hearts, Lord, transform our lives to better uh, please you and also to bring glory and honor to you, Lord. We pray for kingdom building, Lord, as we study your word, Lord, always striving to be more like Christ and to be a witness to this dark world, Lord. We pray that you just bless us and guide us through this lesson, Lord. We pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, uh, united through the Spirit, and like I say, uh, uh, Scripture is from 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 14. The Holy Spirit brings us through as one church. In the Bible, the Bible meets life. In June 2016, the election of the new president of Southern Baptist Convention was a close race. A runoff vote was still too close to call, leading to a second runoff vote. Prior to the vote, though one of the candidates, J. Deer Greener, were, uh, withdrew his candidacy, Greer told the convention he had prayed that night before and believed he needed to suggest his opponent, Steve Gaines, be elected by uh, acclamation. An interesting claims had uh, also decided to withdraw as a candidate for the sake of unity. The two men met, prayed, and agreed that Gaines should be the sole nominee and that the role of president, uh, take the role of the president. These men had determined that unity in the mission was, uh, uh, was what was most important. Their decision was a remarkable display of unity. Christians are a device, uh, diverse group uh, of people. Even within uh, a particular denomination, we are different in culture, age, uh, uh, social, economic status, skill, personality, and sometimes even in the priorities we hold. The only thing that can bring unity among such people is the movement of God's spirit. He gives us a common faith and a common mission. Excuse me. Now. Okay, sorry about that. I have... Okay, 1 Corinthians 12, 4 and 7. It says, Now there are uh, diversities of gift, but the same Spirit. And there are different uh, of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. The uh, key word is the manifestation of the Spirit in verse 7. The phrase refers to the demonstration of the Holy Spirit present and power in a believer through the use of spiritual gifts. When the Apostle Paul traveled to a new city, he would first go to the synagogue to preach the good news of the Messiah to the Jews who lived there. As Paul told the good news of the Messiah, many responded to the message of Christ by replacing by placing their faith in him. Amen. Paul then carried the gospel to the marketplace of the city and proclaimed Christ to the Gentiles. They also respond to the gospel. The result of groups of believers, both Jews and Gentiles, would form a single church family, but they were far from a homogenically group, homogenically, homogeneous group. Paul addressed this diversity in the Corinthian church because while diversity is good, the church has become divided into fractions. 
They were not only they were not only divided by culture, but also by their understanding of ministry of the spiritual gift. First Corinthians 12 was a call for unity in the church. The key word in this passage is diversity and difference. Uh, Paul discussed diversity of gifts, difference of administration, and a diversity of operation. The Holy Spirit is the one who equips, but he does not give the same gifts to all believers. Amen. People will not be drawn to the same kind of ministry. The spirit inspires passion of one person may seem odd and out of step to another. Yet it is the same spirit who works in us. Uh, these three areas uh, different gifts, administration, and operation describes the working of the Holy Spirit, but each world word captures the work from a different perspective. And gifts, a gracious bestower, a gift, a blessing on the member of the church by the spirit. Administration, the service carried out with those gifts, focus on the purpose the Lord has for the gift. Operation, the work of God through actions that point to the leadership of God using each person and their gifts. For example, the Spirit gives one person the gift of evangelism. The person would have a willing heart for the loss of a desire to engage them with the gospel. His ministry would be to engage with the loss for the purpose of seeing them respond in faith. The activity would include the specific way God works through that individual for the purpose of evangelism such as directing him to a specific place at a specific time to share Christ at a specific, in a specific way. Rifts were occurred in the Corinthian church. Therefore, Paul stressed unity in the body, pride over certain spiritual gifts and one upmanship causes tremendous damage to the fellowship. He, the gift of the spirit does not create division. That the same Spirit gives all the gifts. The same Lord calls us to use them in ministry, and the same God leads us to action. God is one, Father, Son, and Spirit. God is one. He expects His church to function as one. Amen. That's key. However, Paul was not calling for uniformity. Uh, uniformity. Unfortunately, uh, uniformity. Uniformity means we are doing the same thing in the same way. The Holy Spirit works with people differently, but in various ways our lives in the Spirit, we exhibit a un unity of purpose. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. Gifts are more than a characteristic. The Spirit gives us, they display the power of God by working to us in different ways. Right? These gifts are snapshots of God's power. When we understand that, it ends personal pride. In fact, the gifts are not about individual or what, what we want to do. God gives us the gifts to profit with all. No matter how God has gifted you and me, however, uh, however we use these gifts in his service for his church and for the good of all his people. And what can you learn from these verses about God's intention for his church? And I, I, I just put up a bubble that it says, we use these gifts for his service, for his church and for the good of all his people. First Corinthians 12, eight through 11. For, the one in, uh, for to one is given by the spirit, the word of wisdom, to another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit to another faith, by the same spirit to another gifts of healing, by the same spirit. To another the works of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kind of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. But all these works does that one and the self same spirit is dividing to every man 
severely all he will. One key truth we sound through these verses. There is one spirit, Paul mentioned, a variety of gifts individuals might use in the body of Christ. But regardless of the gifts, they all come from the same spirit. The church has a diverse range of gifts and ministry, but the work is done through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Paul lists a spirit, a spiritual gifts in this passage different somewhat from other lists contained in the New Testament. Let's look at Romans 12, 68. So Romans 12, 6-8. Okay. Having these gifts different according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy let us prophesy, giving to the proportion of faith, for ministry, let us wait on a ministry according to the teaching, teaches on teaching, or to exhortation or exhortation that he gives, let him do it in simplicity. He that ruleth with different uh, dil uh, diligence, he that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. Uh, that was six to eight. Okay, in Ephesians 4 11. Ephesians 4, 11. Says, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. And 1 Peter 4, 9 through 11. 1 Peter 4, 9 through 11. Use hospitality one to another without a grudge. As every man has received the gift, so even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Uh, and then I'm going to see 11. If, we, if any man speaks, let him speak as the oracle of God. If any man ministers, let him do it as the ability which God giveth. The God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Okay, Paul did not provide a comprehensive list of gifts. He emphasized was more on the spirit who gives the gifts than on the specific gifts we receive from him. Paul was demonstrating different ways the spirit gives his people. Over the years, people have attempted to, to group the gifts into various ways. Um, but perhaps the simplest way is to put them in four, uh, four broad categories. Okay, the gifts that support. Gifts such as helping and leading, guiding, working of the church and help to get it done. Romans 12, 8. Let's look at that. Romans 12, 8. Or he, uh, uh, I want to read these uh, living. If your gift is encouraging others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if, if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Okay, and then First Corinthians twelve twenty eight. First Corinthians twelve twenty eight. And it still is in the Living Translation. Here are some of the parts uh, of God has appointed for the church: first, the apostles; second, the prophets; third, the teachers; then those who do miracles, those who have gifts of healing, those who can help others, those who have the gift of leadership, and those who speak in unknown language. And then that was uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Gifts that share, gifts such as showing mercy and hospitality, tangible tangible ways of communication, uh, communicating God's love both inside and outside, 
church family, and that's uh, Romans 12, 8, and 1 Peter 4, 9. You know, they read 12, 8, Romans 4, 9. Gifts of speaking, uh, uh, gift uh, that speaks. Uh, gifts such as prophecy and teaching around the church and word of God, like Romans 12, 6 through 8, and 1 Corinthians 12, 28, 29, and Ephesians 4, 11. And gifts of uh, supplement, the gifts such as wisdom, knowledge, faith, support, and other gifts. The Spirit works in diverse ways through the people of God to carry on the mission of God. A few years ago, I took a ministry uh, trip overseas with a small group of men and women from my church to support the work of a new church in that area. One day we went to a church park to connect with young people gathered there. One of our team members grabbed a football and invited several youth to learn American football. Other team members joined them. One was not so athletic, so he connected with the young people with kind-hearted jokes and words of encouragement. One of the women was sitting in the shade of the tree when a sad-looking girl wandered over the woman welcomed her. When the young girl began to share her own frustration and doubt, the conversation led quickly to deep spiritual discussion. To ask which one of these people did ministry correctly is to miss Paul's point. Not everyone does ministry in the same way. The idea is to minister out of the movement of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Verse 11 is the key. But all these works that one and the self same spirit, he moves among people of God in various ways to accomplish the good, the common good. Why does the spirit demonstrate the gift of leadership is is one person life while working through the gifts of hospitality to, in another? The Spirit distributes his gifts to every man severely as he will. The Holy Spirit Spirit knows what best and he does what he sees fit. When have you seen diversity bring strength to God's people? I would say, you know, when you have church, like, you know, like the some are uh, singing in the choir, the preacher preach the word. Some are worshiping, you know, with, uh, praise and worship, you know. So all together, uh, like we say, we have church. They would leave a different way, and then they came, you know. They, they're filled with the spirit. They feel rejoice uh, as they leave. They feel that uh, they, they were leaving a different way. The spirit ministered to them. So I think that's all have diversity. Everyone, like choir sings, uh, preacher preach, uh, uh, people in the audience uh, and the congregation, they uh, worship God in their own way, you know. So um, I think that's it. That's for me, anyway, like you, whatever way you see. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 14, for as the body is one and many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit all, we all baptize into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be born or free, or have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. The key word is baptized. The term refers to baptism in the Holy Spirit by which every believer is incorporated in the body of Christ at the moment of salvation. Amen. Paul uses an analogical to illustrate his point, describing the church as Christ's body. He extends this analogy to the rest of the chapter and is so doing, he gave us a strong visual picture of unity of the church. Paul wrote, uh, Paul wrote that the human body is one and has many members, hands, feet, eyes, and pancreas, uh, lots of parts. All those parts are important to you. Your body can function, function with one, uh, with only one eye, but the loss creates new challenges. Even though you can't see, 
you pay to try living without one, but you still only have one body. Your body is not a collective amount of spare parts, all the parts add up to one body. You never talk about the different parts of your body as separate bodies. You always see your body as one. Amen? In the same way, the body of Christ, we are one spirit body in Christ. There are many of us, but we all are not disconnected. Group of random individuals that just happen to be sitting together in the same building, we are one. How in the human body is the metaphor of the church? How is, is the human body a good metaphor for the human church? Because you've got many parts, you got many parts of your body, but they all one body. Like I like it when it says you don't call each part a body. You know what I mean? It's a, a part of the body. The body is the body. How is it? How is in the human body? Uh, okay, so that's that. Our unity is not because of the similarity of the parts. The, the the bricks in your house have a certain sense of uniformity because they are all pretty much the same, same size, same color. Uniformity, though, is not the same as unity. Unity comes from having to share Lord and share purpose. Christ's body is more like an organic whole with essential parts functions differently, but also independently. Some of the Corinthians were Jews, and some were Greeks, and some were slaves, and others were free. The church today is a variety as they were. Believers today come in all shapes, size, and ethnicity, and with a variety of gifts and ministries. But we all are one in Christ. The church depends on the difference in its members bring to the church. When I look to my church family, I see a rich gathering of individuals. Everyone has a heart of deep compassion. Passion. Lent is a fairly new Christian who loves to contribute financially whenever he can to the ministry of the church. Tim is a detailed guy who can explain our church doctrines and knows where the microphone batteries need to be changed. Betty home is always open. Cleo is a teenager. Cleo uh, is a teenager with a ready smile and a warm hug. In them, I see different expressions of mercy given in the ministration, hospitality, and encouragement. Together, we are not. Together, we are one church. The Holy Spirit is worked through many parts. He has assembled as one body. And Paul pictures the work of the Spirit to bring people together in two ways. One uh, by one spirit, we are all baptized. It seems like that Paul, likely that Paul used the picture of water baptism to remind us of a spiritual truth. Believers are united because we are all immersed in Christ and, and the whole, His Holy Spirit. Together, we are surrounded by Him, engulfed in Him. We have been all made to drink into one spirit. We are immersed in the Holy Spirit and we also fill us with him. We are in him and he is in us. We share the same spirit who works through us. Several years ago, I was invited to teach at a retreat in Romania. Young adults, uh, Romanian young adults, and in so many ways, I am not like them. But during the retreat, I grew up to love, love them dearly and to feel a deep sense of connection with them. Unity among different kinds of people seems realistic, but the Holy Spirit works in us, binds our heart to each other, and gives us a common purpose and makes us one. Amen. And then it says, question five, what are some ways our group reflects on both diversity and unity in the church and that has engaged and that you can do during the week? Uh, the Holy Spirit, live it out. Holy Spirit brings us together as one church. Uh, the Holy Spirit brings us together as one church. Choose one of the following applications. Discover. 
If you don't know your spiritual gifts, take an assessment to help you discover your gifts in way they can be used in and do uh, your church. Serve. Use uh, the gifts God has given you to serve his body. You don't have to know what your gift is to serve. Amen? Just start serving in the areas where your heart is drawn and your gifts will manifest itself. Amen? That's that's key. I, I think that's important. Uh, there. Ask the church leader to help getting plugged in. Mentor. Encourage other believers who are unsure about their spiritual equip, equipping uh, offer to walk alongside them and they, them as they seek God's purpose for them in the church. Amen. So that was a lesson for this day. It's a good lesson. And the next lesson will be, uh, if you want to look, is who is your neighbor? And uh, let's, we'll start a new session there. And if you want to look at it, it'll be Luke 10, 25 to 37. So we thank you for blessing on the Holy Spirit. Uh, let's bow in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. Thank you once again for the Holy Spirit, Lord. We thank you for letting us uh, uh, dwell in this lesson, Lord, and about the teaspoons about unity in the church, Lord. We all uh, uh, are led by one spirit, but have different uh, uh, assignments, Lord, and uh, different uh, calls. But they uh, all uh, to bring glory and honor to you, Lord. So, uh, Lord, we just uh, pray that you will guide us and direct us uh, with our gifts and the gifts you give us, Lord. Uh, they might not be the same each day, Lord, that uh, you might be called to witness one day and you may call to serve in your church a different way. Uh, but all is to bring glory and honor to you. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit which guides and directs us to our lives, teaches us, Lord, the things about the kingdom that we need to learn and to apply to our lives, Lord. So we give you the praise, honor, and glory always. We pray this all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Have a blessed week. We pray for all those prayers that were lift up to you, Lord.